Friday night special edition. Let's hit the books <laughs> alongside the man, the myth, the legend himself, Joey Knish, producer extraordinaire again, Zach Phillips. He will be out, Jason, filling in like he has the last three shows. We have a special guest, Mr. Steve Fezzik, joining us in a few minutes. And obviously, I'm merely Brad Powers. So let's break it down. Obviously, this is a watch along show. So a little bit different than our typical hit the book show. We'll get to all your questions and concerns. We'll recap what we've seen so far the first day and a half uh, or so of March Madness. We'll get you an early look as far as the second round games. And then most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, it's the game you've been waiting for your entire <laughs> lives. The Longwood Lancers, the 16 the seed against the number one seeded Houston Cougars and hundreds of thousands of Fezzik dollars on the line with his famous, or I should say infamous, money line bet on Houston. And we'll be breaking it down. And we'll go as long as this game's competitive. We'll go at least a half here uh, once it tips. Uh, but uh, Kanish, we only got you for a little bit because I, I know it's 930 on the East Coast and it's going to be your bedtime soon. So uh, well, we'll be looking forward to ta- chatting with you. That's what I was saying. This game, we, this game, the first half should be half over by now. But we pushed it. We're like, who? I don't know who's setting up this thirty. But uh, now they pushed us again another fifteen minutes. So, uh, I, I mean, I know this is a premium game, but uh, I don't know who, who's scheduling this stuff here. But I tell you what, I've never been. I've never been to Longwood, Virginia. I don't even know if that's a city. Uh, is it Fairfield, Virginia, that it's in, or is it Longwood, Virginia? I don't know, but uh, as you can see, my little... <laughs> I don't know, but something special is happening in the Lancers. I Farmville, Virginia. I'm not, I've not been in Farmville, Virginia. Uh, even, I went to Virginia. Farmville? I, is Farmville, that, is never that, even is heard that of actually, it. Are you, is that really it? Yeah, Farmville, Virginia. <laughs> oh, I just looked it up. Far, Farmville, Virginia. Yeah. Tell you what. <laughs> uh, you, you see what? I would I, I, I would have lost some money on that trivia, but... Uh, I t- if there's a game now, this is from smarter basketball people than me. If there's a one seed and there's a game of this tournament that some of the people thought that uh, the team could be a little frisky, it's our friends from uh, from Farmville, baby. Uh, <laughs> friend of the friend of Betstamp, John Fenler had some uh, some stats there, some fancy stats on this Longwood team, Houston. I tell you what, they just play they play the type of game. Like a Virginia, where if you, you get into that ugly, you know, defensive game and the shots aren't falling, you know, it, it you don't have as much margin as if you play like an up tempo, you know, uh, premium style of basketball. So let's hope, uh, let's hope our Lancers can can at least stick around and make it interesting. Also, yeah, it, the possibility certainly there. Uh, to say also, the least, we got a we got celebrities in the chat. We got a lot of uh, the viewers galore here. We got GRP. He's uh, obviously in the chat. Love to see George, who's cornered the the NFL draft market already. Buried Caesars is what I heard. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I wouldn't. The king of sports, or, or no, no, that's not even the. I don't even know what the Caesars logo is, but they're uh, they're in trouble. Can we real quick? Yeah, touch on the money line that Fez quoted for this this game and i can't wait to talk to him about it because i'm pretty sure he tweeted like minus 2400 on houston no and probably was available at one book uh he doesn't <laughs> care about why <laughs> why we available at, 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 at like on fremont at 3 a.m and at uh the red rock where are the motel six the the guy the corner bookie on, on the like Five blocks off of Fremont was offering that price. Minus twenty five hundred. Uh, I'm guessing it was DraftKings, who's been a little bit lower on their big money lines. I've noticed. Uh, I'm guessing Blue Horseshoe likes Connecticut minus nine hundred against Northwestern. Uh, available only at DraftKings, but you know it counts. It's not widely available, but uh, I uh, I have seen it. I, I believe it was DraftKings. I have actually seen the ticket, so uh, it is legitimate. Uh, I obviously have questioned legitimacy from Fez. For a, this isn't the first rodeo <laughs> between him and me, <laughs> to say the least. So uh, I have seen it. I think it was minus twenty five hundred DraftKings. We'll ask him once he gets on here. But uh, obviously, it wasn't available for very long. 
uh, and it feels like a little bit of pass posting, but uh, we'll see. I mean, what's your confidence level? I you did bet Longwood here. You took a little bit of a, a little sprinkle pizza bet. Well, uh, yeah, more than a sprinkle. I mean, I wasn't gonna not do the stream with Fez and not bet it, so I did. I did for because I thought we were only doing the first. And to be honest with you. I just thought I liked I even like the the first half a little bit more, especially in these uh, tournament games. See, team gets a little frisky for the first half, so I took uh, fifteen and a half, I think, first half, and then the money line there at uh, our friend. I don't know. We can I give him the. I don't know. If we, I don't want to get Moretto in trouble, but uh, for, the Dave Mason friend friends of the show were able to post that uh, that money line there, so I could so I could get a piece since. Uh, I was looking to get a little bit bigger bet than some of the some of the other places were allowing. So that very very nice of them to to hook hook it up there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I, I the D, DK who I tweeted had thirteen to one. Uh, but I wanted uh, a, a little bit a uh, little bit bigger bigger sample than what they were willing to offer. We have Fezzik, but he's having some camera issues, so we'll delay that for just a few minutes. Obviously, the, the game hasn't tipped well, yet. Well, I think a well, good thing that they've delayed the game eight times. It's not starting till uh, 10, 10, 45 here, so uh, I think we, he's got plenty of time. Yeah, and uh, I will say, if you think I'm going to be easy on Fez, you got another thing coming. I will be questioning him about this whole thought process as far as betting I don't mind the bets. I mean, the, the, the betting personally. I mean, obviously, I see why he does it as far as betting, but I don't see the positive as far as giving it out to the world. Do you? Before he even gets on here, I mean, it makes for some great content. That's all I got. Yeah, great, great I, I would... That's what I'm wondering. Is he playing a different game? Uh, I, I guess for content uh... purposes, because I don't see what's the upside other than betting it regularly. What, what what's the upside? Give it out. I mean, you don't look that smart because it's a big favorite, and you only have downside. Like I will AKA give him credit. I saw AKA uh, Villanova. I saw Peabody post he did too, but after the games were completed, he was like, "Oh, I, I, I'm not the only one that after they already won." No, 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 no. Yeah, you're you gonna do post. it. So yeah, I'll, I'll give Fezzik right. credit. At least he's on close to minus five thousand. Yeah. I mean that is such uh, only a Yale guy would do that. Uh <laughs> but I <laughs> oh at least Fez is giving it out. And I'll be honest with you, from a guy that doesn't watch a ton of college basketball, I was locked into that DePaul game, and I'm I'm I'll be locked in as long as Longwood's uh hanging around. Our boys are on the farm are hanging around. Uh I'll be watching this one. So I'll give him credit for that. Quick take so far, not only today, but uh, even yesterday. Uh, so far, how's the tournament going for you uh, and, and any major takeaways? I'll, I'll give you one, and I've tweeted about it. I'm guessing this will be the last time we ever see six teams from the Mountain West Conference getting in. In <laughs> fact, I'm not sure they'll get five. I'm not sure they'll ever get four in, let alone six, after what we've seen from them. I hope they, like my tweet mentioned, I hope they continue to put as many teams as possible. Because if there's been a really good bet in the NCAA tournament, big sample size, 20 years, betting against Mountain West teams has been pretty profitable. And uh, I, I'm not thinking Utah State's chances are too good here uh, coming up uh, in, the, in the final game of the first round against TCU. Uh, any other big takeaways that, that you've seen so far? Uh, you know, I agree with I, I some people are referring to them as like the, you know, the, the Mountain West, the fifth, the sixth power conference of college basketball year. And, uh, of course, they they fall flat. Um I will say, and if you if you've been around the gambling Twitter circles for a while, you know the the hashtag one future needed crowd that bets Gonzaga every year. They didn't say anything about it all year, and I tell you, watch them go to the final four. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, between the between the team kind of messing here and uh, the draw they got, I'm kind of like you know you saw it today, and I was like, man. Uh, I could kind of see it. I could kind of see the Zags finally make finally making a run the year that uh, they fall off the map uh, from a te the team that you would have thought. Yeah, I mean, uh, you look no further than that matchup uh, coming up here tomorrow where they're four and a half point favorite over Kansas, a Kansas team that's very susceptible, to say the least, and banged up and probably could even have lost easily in the first round there. So, boy, I'm seeing 15 to one to win the region. Connor Woo! mentioned uh hold the mention nice that as problem. well where you got that baby uh, but I, I like that ticket how about trip i didn't see this one this prop available mountain west under four and a half wins was even money at bet mgm oh, i wow. did not bet that 
kudos for that bet for you uh, tripping the chat there uh, for getting that under four and a half wins. That, that feels <laughs> not, not watch. I think people bet that last year and San Diego state obviously went over it by themselves. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you don't get another run from San Diego state. Uh, so that, that, that'll be interesting to say the least. Uh, I, I, you know, I kind of lean to the, if we're given a preview, I kind of lean Yale in that next round. I think Yale plus five and a half. That's a decent bet for me. I have made that bet. Uh, Charles in the chat, Brad, how did all the overs bets go? Ah, uh, pretty much split it out. Although we're getting some more higher scoring games today. So I don't know. I might end up slightly ahead. Uh, I got CLV baby. Ooh, the, 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 the great CLV on a majority of them, but, uh, did not cast particularly the, the, the early start times have uh, been, been relatively slow starts to say the least. Uh, you went not, not a shock there. Uh, when, whenever Fez is ready to go, Jason, you can just bring him on. I don't need to actually introduce him. So whenever his camera is ready, uh, just, you can just bring him on and we can start breaking down the game. But uh, I got to say another old man yelling at a cloud. We were talking about this before we came on. How in the hell I mean, I got five screens up here. We're not even close to any of these games tipping off. I mean, how do you do it on the East Coast? 945, none of these games have tipped off. I and mean, we're talking all these games are going to end after midnight. I mean, I know it's a Friday night, but geez. I mean, last night, no exception. I mean, uh, these games seem to be going later and later. I mean, maybe I'm getting older. It's a little bit of both. But uh, yeah, how do you do I, it, man? I, I, I ain't got it in me. I guess I, I don't understand the, the draw or what you would want it. Like, why... <laughs> I, I don't know with if games does it take that long to turn the court around or I, I I guess I don't see the especially from a a TV standpoint of why why you would want to keep pushing these back I don't know but no I agree with you here uh, even uh, Joey K in in his in his old age now uh, you know pro, now granted if it was a college football Saturday I I may make the uh, I may make the sacrifice as you know but but for uh, for tournament hoops here, uh, no, nah, I don't. Uh, I won't be staying up to the wee, wee hours of the morning uh, unless Longwood is, you know, unless we got a tie game here. Let's just go ahead and bring in Fest. No camera, so we don't we don't get a chance to look at this beautiful mug. Uh, I should put up a picture uh, and just put it like on, on my shirt or something with Fest. I can print that out. We got an hour. Uh, <laughs> I got some pictures of <laughs> queued up. Uh, <laughs> but Fez, man, long time no talk, buddy. How how you feeling as well? Uh, we get into the big game tonight. Uh, the, the, how, what's the confidence level, bud? Well, I just got my brand new, beautiful tadpole camera up and working on every other show. But um, hey, I'm about 90, so I can't figure it out. So my apologies. No, you don't have to apologize to me, man. Uh, the, the, I uh, the, the, this ain't. I don't. Some people would call this a win-win. Like, yeah. hey, we no, you know, what? we just get the the voice there. We don't have to deal with the the camera. I've had. You know what? I when the stream yard too, I've had to uh, like restart a few times. Sometimes, it, occasionally, if you know, I hit the books. I may be a few minutes late, okay? and it's been because I've had to restart for some camera issues every once in a while. So uh, I, I feel you there from a from a tech standpoint. What hey, let's take logo? a look at this Purdue game. I, uh, I'm looking at your I, logo. I, 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 like I go get one cat. one at a time. I think the Purdue under is 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 a good play right now. Um, per, obviously, What's the live line fest Purdue under. Because people are wow. asking for picks, and then we'll get to the the late uh, tip games. Let me see if know. I let me see if I've got a number up. But I, I, I mean, most books are going to have it down. I'm, I got to get into my MGM book, which will probably still have it up. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> fair enough. Don't they? They're going to take it off here. They got a blowout, and we're under five minutes. How are you? You're probably looking at fifty books, and one book will have it. So I mean, I, hey, I'm not giving it out as an official play to my clients. So icy right. calm, <laughs> relax. <laughs> you know, Fair enough. I mean, you are like... now getting the. In For those of you that aren't familiar with Fez, and I don't know how you're not if you're in the gambling space, but you're getting a, an idea of how it works with him. Sharp, but uh, so a, a character to say the least. Hey, uh, if you do, you, do you, we, white man can't jump. You want You want to win ugly, or do you want to lose? You know, attractive wise. Just like when you're busting my balls for giving out a play at 3 a.m under 158 and then by 5 a.m it's 153 let's get into this fez i mean (laughs) look i mean i'll agree i think most touts i'm one of them i mean for the majority i'll include myself in it we're we're, you know bad Uh, you could say different levels of bad but don't you isn't an obligation to your customers to give out widely available numbers how many people at 3 a.m east coast time are able to bet, man. Midnight, West Coast time. I'm sleeping. 
You're spot on. There is an obligation to my customers and I would be remiss to have a great play and not alert them. And then the question is, all right, well, how do I alert them if I with the system if I don't give out a play, Brad? You tell me. There are other games last I checked. I mean, so, so, I just, so if you subscribe not... to, to summarize, if you subscribe to me and I have a total that I think is off by five points, you would rather me not take my little finger before I go to sleep at 3 a.m. and click, hey, this is a good bet. You'd rather me just to go to sleep and then let, let you know it, I it, like it, it, it under it's off five points. points. Let's see if it's off two points in the morning and make it widely, make it a wide lit when it's widely available number. I so just, when it's, I think so we have you don't, want, you don't want to hear about to, under 158 that are widely available. I mean, anybody, I, I think it's easy to win, but it's harder to win for other people. Uh, and I, I just, I, if nobody, if five people are getting the bet, what, what's it, what good is it doing? Five people, five, five people out of your thousand customers got the bet. So, wow. Five people won big deal. Well, probably I should put it out as a free play then. Right. Would you agree with that? Yeah, but I was a free play. I think that's. I, I'm I, sorry I, I called you out for that, but I mean, I thought it was legitimate. Look, I'm betting your stuff. I think you have, you are obviously positive EV. Uh, I, I also ask you this. I mean, if you think it's five points off, hammer hammer it yourself, man. It, it ain't gonna be worth that much to to be up a couple extra units with your customers. Hammer it yourself. It wouldn't it be better ROI for you personally just to bet as much as you can yourself on that. Well, the problem is that I'm limited in a bunch of books and they don't move like Draft DraftKings and MGM. They let me bet it for what they let me bet it for, and then they don't even move it. It's because they don't let me bet very much on it, so it's still sitting out there. And I'm like, well, why not give it to everybody? All right, we'll get into more of this. If you think I'm gonna stop. Uh... I'm sure you'll make a comment or two that'll. Uh, <laughs> well, did you, you said something that was very poignant though, and I, I want to address it because you said it's. I think you used the word easy to win. Was that? Did I hear you correctly? I think it is. It's easy to win. It's harder to win for other people. I think it, what it's hard to do. It's easy to win, Fez. It's harder to scale up. I mean, once you prove that you can win, I mean, and, and I mean, the reality is, okay, how do I scale this operation up? I think that's much tougher than ever before. I think it's tougher to to, to win for, uh, you know, people that are you know following you. Uh, the majority of the people, if you want to be fair, I mean, obviously, I could, yeah. You want me to uh, you know put out fifty season win totals in college football? I can do that right now, and they're not widely available. But I think there's great value. You think I should do that? I mean, I'll throw yeah, that it's, out. It's there. a great question because there's like three books right now that have numbers up, and I mean, famously, we could we could talk about Colorado, um, the idea of could you give out under five and a half under five? It's, it's gotta be frustrating. You know, it's doubly frustrating. It would be a lot easier to put out these winning plays if I wasn't betting them myself. So uh, there are guys I've been very critical of. I mean, when you don't bet, you have an enormous advantage in this industry because you don't, you, you, you almost, um, what do they call that? When you're, um, uh, when they open up like nine Starbucks within two city blocks, you know, they cannibalize each other. Yeah. And and you wind up whacking all these numbers. And now if you want to give out, you know, Colorado under, you got to give out under four because you whacked under five and a half and five personally. And if you hadn't done that, you know, maybe that number's still out there for everybody. So I will say this, and, and we, we, I discussed this with Rob and Johnny on the Circles Off episode I did prior to the season. Obviously, when, when you bet yourself, when you tout, and I, when you do content, I mean, it sounds like there's correlation between the three and they can all work in unison. There's a lot of times there's conflict. If you want to do all three, it's a, it's a tough balancing act to do all of them. So uh, I will say this, Fez, you are off to a decent start here. Five. Yeah, I was going like to, I've been a- quiet because I tell you what, it, it, it the, the Lancers don't look too, uh, too, too, too live. If I'm being completely honest, here, <laughs> for two and a half minutes. there's some energy for Houston to start the game. Uh, I think on your behalf, uh, Getting crushed by Iowa State in the Big 12 championship game probably was a good result for you betting money line and not having. I mean, obviously, you're always going to be confident when you're dealing with a 20 plus point favorite, but that result in itself, arguably the worst game Houston played all year, I think should have them relatively focused here. So I think, obviously, I think you're in pretty good shape, Fez. Well, and, and, and shout out to Jared Smith, who quoted, he, he was the first one I read the trend. If you lose by 20, in your final game, you're 23 and 10 against the spread since 2005. Now, th- think about this. It makes a lot of sense. The 
the elite teams should do the best. If an elite team gets crushed, I mean, it's one thing if Clemson or South Carolina gets crushed because they're just not that good. Maybe it'll help them, but how much will it help them? Whereas if you're a legit top 10 team and you get smashed, that's got to be a home run spot to be looking to back that team. Anything, a uh, couple of these games have tipped off. James Madison, Wisconsin, did you have anything there? And I'll throw it out to you as well. Uh, to, to, did you have anything? Uh, yeah, the, the good doctor uh, was on whiskey minus four and a half. So I, I was on one of my morning conference calls. So I I, fought, I tailed him and laid four and a half. And then I like James Madison. So I played back plus six, the skinniest of all middles. The hitman and I disagree about this completely. So my philosophy is oftentimes always play back, APB. If a line moves more than a point and a half or moves excessively and it's a good story and Raz or Dr. Bob or Joey Kanish or Brad Powers is you're recommending you play that and then he's got hundreds of followers at some point, not always, but oftentimes the number just moves a little bit too far. How much do you recommend playing back? 20%, 30%? You can j- jump in here to Kanish. It depends. I, I, so I'm, I'm not, I would, I'm not that I like to agree with the, the hitman uh, at any point, but I, I would say I'm not on the always play back train, but I do. I, I think there is a, a certain scenario that even if, uh, I, I mean, you would shave a certain percentage of risk off of a regard where it's usually a small, I'm not a big, like just, just go middles guy. Oh, are we about, Oh my God. We're about, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't keep my thoughts together with this Longwood uh, offense, but uh, I mean, I, yeah, it's, I play I mean, a little bit back. Now is we're getting ready. going to score a point. I was going to say, I, I don't I mean, like, well, are we going to like, I think it's going to have to be 15, zero and a half to cover this 15 and a half. Oh my God. 10. The, uh, in Houston. Uh, if you bet yeah, race bro. to 10 Longwood, you're not looking good right now. <laughs> um, the uh, by the way, I think the uh, the Purdue under 33 and a half when I recommended the under, I'm sorry, I, I, I recommend something that wasn't widely available, but I don't think they've scored. So um, hopefully someone made some money. Uh, a couple books did indeed have that up, including, you know, Bet US is a really good book um, in terms of live betting. Now they will um, they don't want, you know, super sharp money, big. They don't want big, sharp money. So you're going to get limited if you play there. But it's a great option. If you're looking for a live wagering uh, book that um, deals deeper into a game. Jason, if you want to jump on and see if we can troubleshoot here live uh, as we go, Fez's camera. I mean, the people are wanting to see Fez's cute little mug here. As he, <laughs> I, I mean, he's been working out. I hear every day at Caesar. So he goes there at lunch. Uh, yeah. So, so if, if you guys out. can. If you guys can hear me here, Fez. Yeah, I was just gonna say, just make sure in Streamyard, I'm I'm, I'm texting you right now. Just make sure that one if if your camera is like the correct camera selected, if you can just head over to settings and click that drop down menu beside camera. Yeah, I'm on I'm on settings and I'm on OBS virtual camera, which is the wrong camera, and I don't know why they don't give me another option to go to my tadpole camera. Okay, so your tadpole camera, you might just need the old unplug and plug it back in. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. So, okay. <laughs> I mean, my setup is, is duct taped all over the place. So, okay. Okay. Um, sorry about that. They're not, they're not going to be able to see me. No, you're good. I'll be, I'll, I'll be back with another. <laughs> AV sports in the chat says, Hey, why does powers always wear those dumb glasses? I can't see fuckhead. I mean, they're just my glasses. I don't well, No, no, it's not. Actually, they serve as sunglasses too. So that's why they're aviators. It's not the glasses. It's not the usage of glasses. It's the choice of glasses that he objects yeah, whatever, to. Whatever, man. Oh, they're yeah. they're, 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 whatever. They're transitions. So I like that's, having that's I mean, access I'm, to the Caesars gym. Yeah. I mean, they're, I live in Las Vegas, so it's always sunny. So that they serve as my sunglasses. So I, I have, you know, freaking, uh, aviator sunglasses most of the time so that's why i wear these stupid glasses so uh whatever i mean i I know i got an ugly mug if you want to question that go right ahead if you're looking for a i didn't question it your your listener did um the if you're looking for a free gym membership you need to be if you're a seven stars member you get access to every caesar slash harris gym but there is no gatekeeper at caesar so you can just walk right in if you want to work out at a world-class gym um no i haven't been going every day but i've been trying to go more um, as I've gotten older. And I've frankly, um, the health of my um, brethren, once they hit 60, have not been good. So I think it's like 
a mental note. I, I, it, it was funny. Some someone on another site's like, "Oh, I, I know Fezic is like um, a, com- a a complete and utter fraud because he, you know, he worked out during a March Madness day, and no true pro would ever do that." <laughs> it's like last time I checked, you know, it there, there's been action nonstop since September first. It's kind of hard to like work tw- fourteen hours every single day. If you have a Purdue ticket, congratulations. You covered by one. That was a little dicey there at the end. Purdue looks like hit a three in the final oh, minute. <laughs> uh, and Lancer's on the board, baby. Well, Things I'm, the tide I'm, is turning. I'm sure you guys will be happy to hear that I have indeed advanced my five entries, which I doubled down on Purdue and last man standing. So uh, I... I survive in advance. Five Fezzix go into Saturday. Um, what should I play on Saturday, boys? You're talking against the spread? Yes, sir. Um, otherwise, I probably would have played Purdue on the money line and the survivor. But yes, against the spread. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, let's break it down. Says, I don't think we're going to get that too pa- a competitive a game here between Houston and Longwood here. It, 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 Looks dicey early, and I, I'm, I may not be a basketball guy here, but I, I'm not thinking that L- L- Longwood is live in this game. No, I, I, I don't think they're live to cover a point spread. To, to put in <laughs> Might need a little Novocaine if you bet Dr. Bob's Wisconsin, though. As a, it's early, fast. As the it's Dolly early. Madisons have rolled out and are now the uh, current favorite. Look at this. You know, it, it, everyone talks about live wagering. It's really hard to win minus 115. By the way, like, like Johnny. I don't know what Johnny's doing when he's when 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 I'm talking to Brad. I mean, you and I both know this. It's it's easy to win. And then Johnny says, Oh, I, I really think maybe like maybe Fez wins. And it's like Joey knows this. It's like Dumbo's win. Everybody wins. If you if I mean if, if it's like, can you win playing poker? Yes, you can win playing two five or one three. You don't make as much as someone working at McDonald's, especially in California now, but you <laughs> win. I mean, it's, the point is not winning, the point is to scale it up. And like this is a really important point. If you could just scale it up linearly, everyone would be a billionaire that bets on sports. Because if we could bet the same numbers that we're betting when we're betting 100 a game, we'd smash the books and then we'd bet 1,000 and 10,000, 100,000. But the problem is that it gets harder and harder. One, books have lower limits on the stuff that's more beatable. And two, you get profiled and they stop letting you bet anything. So I'll use an example in Vegas. Um, South Point won't let me bet. Westgate won't let me bet on the app. They They give me micro limits. I mean, those are like considered to be two of the, you know, and they are relatively speaking, the most friendly to sharp betters, Brad, I, I can only, I, I can only imagine what your limits are, at, you know, at, at South point, I'm guessing a hundred a game on totals. Am I correct? No, a little higher. I, I don't beat them up too much. So you're probably not actively betting very much then. I, I don't know. actively bet every sport. Go. So I, 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 I'm selective. I, I did get limited after pro I hit them for a few props and finally got limited on those, but I can still, you know what? I, I'm so select. I, I haven't even touched them too much. I, I was able to bet max bet basketball, college hoops. They opened up the market, took advantage of that. Although I'm, I'm kind of an idiot and uh 50, 50. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I had a lot of CLV. I just didn't win them, but you know, newsflash, I didn't win a bunch there. Uh, but yeah, by, I haven't been micro limited yet. I, I don't bet every day. So I think that maybe that saves me and maybe I'm just an idiot. I'm as smart as you. So, uh, quick. Well, that's not that's not being smart. That's just being diligent, right? I mean, that, that, that's yeah. that's that's being get, getting over there and and I get over there too. I mean, if I really want to take advantage of them and they got something wrong, I usually try not to bet it on the app. Mm-hmm. I, I try to go in person. So, a uh, couple things in the chat. I'll keep it. I'll try to keep it moving here. Do we got anything in these last two games? Grand Canyon, St. Mary's, and uh, Utah State, TCU. I would say TCU minus four would be my personal preference. I'm just total fade Mountain West. I got you, you want to talk long term trends? We got one. 20 years, 35 percent against the spread. Mountain West, overrated conference. You know, if you talk, if you look at the Grand Canyon, St. Mary's, and I was, I, I mean, I love St. Mary's, and some of my brackets, I've got them going to the Final Four. Oh but my God, this is me an too. example how the world has changed. So back 15 years ago, Friday night in Vegas, 7:30 game, 10:30 Eastern, you would see irrational steam you would see michigan yeah. state would be laying six against george mason when the market was five everywhere and now i'm looking at the screen and it's like yeah if i get on my helicopter and i go to treasure island i could get a four and a half on on utah state that's like the only four and a half on the screen that's remarkable and the line's four everywhere 
And same with St. Mary's, the line's 5.6. There's a couple sixes at Golden Nugget and South Point and Stations. So you're not seeing nearly the disparity as you would see at other places in, in, in prior years. Yeah, I, if we'd have had like a major run on, uh, you know, favorites or dogs, no, haven't you seen that trend line in, in history? Uh, you know, the, the first, you know, say favorites were like 20 and eight to start the, the first round or, or dogs were something like that. Once you tend to see that Friday night, just blind steam on the favorite of their dog, if we had a, a major trend going on in the tournament. Sure, because there's two factors. The public is awash with more cash. What they're doing yeah. is working betting favorites, so they'll bet more favorites. And two, the cumulative liability of the sports books because of all the Good parlay point. liability spikes through the roof. So the guys start running the numbers and like, oh my God, if TCU and St. Mary's both win and cover, then I got to explain to my boss why I just you know lost against the biggest donk betters in the world over a uh, two-day period. Jump in again here, Jason. Quickly, Fezzik, just uh, make sure, one, do you have anything open in the background that might be using your camera, number one? Uh, I was on different sites, but right now I just I just have my Don Best Premium service. Okay, and then number two, I dropped a link in the chat. Click that, and if it if it doesn't work, if you can try, and if you have like maybe in, uh, Internet Explorer or if you're using Google Chrome, you have Firefox, try using one of the other browsers. And then if, if you don't, use a private browser. I'm sure you're aware of what a private browser is. Oh, sure. I'd be an idiot if I didn't know what that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me go oh, out this wow. time. Let's see if it works. Uh, Holt in the chat. Uh, Y'all see the first half under. Uh, trend fell miserably this year. Yeah, that got overpriced uh, in the market. I didn't blindly bet overs. But... Well, it's, it's 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 having a raging comeback in this game. That we're, <laughs> what? I yeah, well, it's fair about enough. to get yeah. back on track uh, in the, with Longwood because uh, I'm not sure this guy going to score 10 points. You know, yeah, it's I'm interesting. Not looking good here. Uh, you want to talk about the easiest bet uh, of the tournament so far? Probably first to ten for Houston again. <laughs> I mean, now I have a question: be. If Longwood does not score twenty points over the course of the game, will they grade first to twenty, or will like some of the uh, like the DraftKings and FanDuel's give reimbursements because they wouldn't <laughs> feel feel it's fair because of that? I'm I'm hoping I get a reimbursement on my first half money or first half money line here for uh, just uh, you know for feeling bad for after seeing this performance. So, what what did, did uh, what what did you play, Joey, on the first half? Uh I'm it was like twelve to one or something like fifteen and a half and twelve to one, thirteen or th DK had thirteen to one for a minute, but uh, it didn't last. But I, just. As as an objective observer here, uh, I'm I'm not I'm not liking how that's trending. Now I'm going to be of the theory that you knew that was a negative EV bet, but you um you made it because that way you'd have documented proof that you could say you went anti fezzy and, uh, <laughs> and 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 be able to like thump that all over the internet. So it probably was a plus EV play when you add in the value of that, right? It, well, act, it, when I made the bet, that was pretty standard. But it actually, the sharper shops around the time of close were like eight to one, eight fifty. Uh, so it actually closed okay. Now, granted, could that have you know people been like uh, you know just just wanting to jump on the you know the 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 first half money line? I'm not sure. I have the the biggest liquidity where people people wanted to have the ticket if the if the Fed's uh, you know first half lost, including me. But. Um, yeah, it closed okay, but uh, I, I it's going to be hard with two points to to cash this this first half money line here. Hey, hey, this is really important because people always hear about beating the closing number and how you'll win if you beat the closing number, and it's simply not true. You have to beat the no vig closing number. There's a big difference, so it can be hard to define. So a first half money line Longwood Houston, um, just glancing at it, it looks like the circa no vig. I'm going to average the bid and ask here. Uh, it was like minus like ten seventy five. The Westgate was like minus fifteen hundred. Uh, Bet online was like minus, you know, it looks like mi minus nine seventy five. So, you know, based upon that, if you if you say the consensus was like minus twelve hundred for the no vig, is, is a better way to go. I, I got to tell you, I think betting exchanges are going to become more and more popular. I know Profit Exchange in Jersey is up you and really, running. You really think that? I feel like people aren't price sensitive enough. Where I know you're doing a nice job here, to, like. Uh, kind of describing with price sensitivity, I feel like the masses aren't in that same boat, at least in this country at the current time. 
Well, I always hear also that people are like, like I, 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 Jeff Benson and I have gone back and forth on this, and he understands this. That like the, the the dastardly bookie will say, "Oh, I can deal thirty to one on the dog and minus four thousand on the favorite." All right, and they're like, "My Theo hold is less than four point five four percent. It's tiny." But I'm gonna I'm gonna refute that right now. You should calculate it based upon comparing the underdog number to the no vig number, and here's why. In my world, I'm going to open up a, a casino. I'm going to have the best roulette game in the world. In the world. Every other roulette uh, game pays 35 to 1. In my casino, I'm only going to pay 34 to 1. All right? But my roulette only has a, before I gave that away, I should have said, my roulette only has a 0.4% household. 0.4. You know why? You can bet the no on numbers. You don't think 33 blacks going to come up? You can risk 40 to make a dollar. You can lay minus 4,000 the other way. And it turns out that when you offer a huge bridge jumper on a no, that when you pair that with the yes, so much more money has to be put on the no to make it a break even that the house Theo drops through the roof. So that's why these, these cockroach sports books can deal like on a money line. They can, they, they can pay 20 to one on Longwood and Houston's like minus, you know, a hundred to minus, you have to risk a hundred to win a dollar. How can they get away with that? Because they can they can say their Theo hold is small, but just because a theoretical hold is small does not mean in any way, shape, or form that it's any sort of good bet. Like as an example, my roulette bet, obviously those would be both be dumb dumb bets to take 34 to one or to lay four thousand. Thoughts, Kanish? No, I mean, listen, I, I just I I agree fully with what he's saying from a uh you know mathematical standpoint or a value standpoint. I just don't maybe have the faith in uh, the humanity to to think that uh, the price sensitivity is there for those models to really take off, especially when it's places that already uh, that are never going to do that already have such a big market share. So <laughs> I, I hear what the set, but I just don't see it. I don't see it coming. And like this big wave of you know exchange draw. That, that 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 people are going to be you know crave for it and there is no you know there is um no uh market for like player props and things like that so i agree that's never going to work but you look at an nfl sunday and because of that there's so much liquidity every one of these games that they the the, the crybaby bookies are saying i got to deal minus 240 plus 210 while on the exchange it's minus 225 and plus 224 it's a penny you know off that's it I hear you. I, I don't see it. I mean, we're year six in the legalization. You think people are really going to be about that at this point? I, I haven't seen it. I don't know if we're good. I, like, I, I, I think we're a long ways away from that. If I, I And I don't know if it'll ever get this by your saying they can't do people like you, you look at like a same game parlay changing the game in terms of like what people it's like that's what the customer wanted is like be able to play basically penny spots slots with sports betting and they gave it to them and now it's like crack everywhere whereas you know price you know saving 2 cents on a NFL side just doesn't have the same mass appeal in my opinion it, I, I don't I mean I see why you're saying of why you, you know it, it has value you would do it but it just one product seems to have taken over the industry uh whereas most exchanges have have trouble getting off the ground here. You know, it it is true. And the problem with the exchange is so difficult to put the offers up. So you, I mean, that is fraught with, um, I won't go into all the difficulties, et cetera, but as long as there's enough out there that all you're doing as an average person is accepting offers, you know, minus one three is better than minus one ten. And even if you're paying a 1% commission fee, so obviously it's like laying minus 105, you're getting everything at half price. So if you could buy gas uh, and think about the scalability, you don't drive across town to save five cents on gas is what people were saying, but, but, but you're, you're paying twice as much. You do drive across town when you're getting gas at 250 a gallon instead of $5 a gallon. And guess what? If you're betting big, now you're not filling up your Ford Fusion 2020, you're, you're filling up your, your tractor trailer and it, it makes an enormous difference. I'll say this. Uh, I don't think very many people are betting big. I think <laughs> I think a majority of people uh, are, I, I still to this day, are $5, 10 $20 bettors. 
and they are not that price sensitive. Uh, they don't under, even understand the value of a half point, let alone the difference in, in, in you know a cent or two as, as far as a money line. Fez, I just you're giving people too much credit. I By the way, way I think we're big, and, and we I are, used to. In this echo chamber here of like maybe you know people that have a little bit uh, even in the chat or in the the the, the people we talk to regular if you go out there and kind of ha- like a, you know go into a, the general public here that might do a little sports betting I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm with powers here I I just I don't I I don't see it at all I, I don't think we're even close to that level of of sense I hear what you're saying with the analogies I just I just don't think people are that at least with sports betting um up on it and i mean they're just that aren't as really aren't interested some and i see in the chat there people don't bet sides until i agree people just aren't that that interested in straight bets in general anymore i I think i think a lot of the new products off there are just much more uh tantalizing uh the 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 bet a little to win a lot is always gonna i think win out over any type of price Yeah, and look, the the, the same game parlay is just a carnival game. Now, people win big against same game parlays. Well, how do they do that? They do it because Draymond Green's going to play 30 seconds and and, and they're just sticking it to the sports book, but they're not doing it, you know, on a regular basis, you know, playing a fair game where they're analyzing all this. The the pricing is is such that anything that has any sort of correlation, you're going to pay through the nose for. So you're not going to win, you know, playing that stuff. I mean, it's fun. It's, I mean, it's fine. We'll play $5, play $10, but don't think it's, you're ever going to actually win, you know, playing it legitimately. Um, you know, as far as your bet sizing, don't buy my picks. If you're betting, if you're not betting $150 a game, I would say don't buy anybody's picks. It's like, it, it's going to cost you too much money. Think about this. People pay $15 for a pick to bet $100 on something. Um, God couldn't win you know, at, at that level. So I think a, a good point, if you're going to buy Brad Powers for the year, I would say, make sure you're betting a hundred dollars minimum per game. And then now all of a sudden you're not putting so much pressure on him that um, he's got to really perform and make 10 units for you to make money. I'll say this. I mean, obviously I, I, I tout and stuff. I would argue that 90% of people uh, should not be betting like with an expectation of winning big uh, or winning at all. I mean, most people, if you're betting recreational, and I would say 99% of people should, you know, shouldn't be buying picks. Just should not uh, be buying picks, especially new people. Uh, Ten years ago, I probably wouldn't have said 99%. I would have said a little bit less. But I just, I, I profile my customers. I, I, I just tell within a couple questions that you probably shouldn't be buying picks. I could just tell. Uh, bankroll would be one. They just don't have the proper bankroll. Uh, I don't have all the answers to the test. If I did, I wouldn't sell picks. Now remember, uh, if they're betting anyways, then they probably should be buying picks because they're going to hit fifty percent on their own. So if you could find someone that hits fifty-two percent, you're going to even if you don't you, you don't win. Now you're not Otani's impersonate or, or um, uh, language guy. <laughs> but by the way, I got to talk quickly about Otani. Um, <laughs> everybody I know slowly taking over. This is just total. For those not uh, in, you're familiar with Fez. This is how his mind works. Uh, total scatterbrain. Uh, I, I, a man that has trouble staying on topic. There's no doubt about that. But but I, I haven't heard the media say this. I mean, Brad, you know this. It's like pulling teeth to try to get twenty thousand credit from anybody. It, you know, when, when when you're playing, and yet somehow this in, interpreter has a million dollars in. Um, <laughs> no, that's a good point. In, in terms Actually, of the credit limit, I'm, oh, I mean, <laughs> the only the only way that uh, anyone's going to get a million dollars in the credit limit or whatever is if someone's like vouching for them I'm, I'm, and, and saying, look, I'm going to make good on their situation. No one who is like the valet for um, Phil Mickelson is going to get a million dollars or a hundred thousand in a credit limit unless Phil's saying, hey, I got this guy covered. We got a little bit of interest here because Houston can't hit a bucket as well. This, this is, I got to tell you, this is I, I'm about to go into Fez. So if this is why, without March Madness or gambling, people college basketball I think would be less popular than like bowling because this is this is some of the worst <laughs> basketball I've ever seen in my life. But Lancers <laughs> within five. I don't know how fourteen nine in ten minutes. Uh, 
I've, I've seen I've seen better basketball at the local LA Fitness, but uh, <laughs> yeah, this has been a tough watch. It may be a tough listen too, so I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, we're mid. I mean, this is football here. I mean, here we go, Longwood, uh, only down five. Uh, Question for you guys, pricing wise. Let's assume Houston's up ten at, at the end of the first half. Is that good for the Houston money line or bad for the Houston money line? Obviously, they're they're um, not meeting expectations. But you don't have to meet expectations to win the game. A game when you're a 24 point favorite. You said if they're up 10, yeah, will be. I mean, relative to what you pay, if the first half money line's 15, you you know you you only you paid the money line based on like whatever that you know. Although we'll call it an offset of that. If Houston hits a three, um, then they would you would probably be a little bit underwater relative to what you paid for the money line. Correct. Assuming you paid whatever the price was at close. I I think it's good news for Houston if Houston's up 10. I disagree. I think you don't have to meet expectations. You just, you're staring at, you need to have a minus three standard deviation failure to lose the game. So as long as you're like minus a half standard deviation, the extreme example, if Houston was up uh, eight points with one minute to play, uh, you'd be like, good. You know, I mean, we're massively underachieved, but we're going to win. We're going to win 99.8% of the time instead of 99.4%. Maybe eight is incorrect. Maybe it should be 10. I'm not sure the exact number. Well, unfortunately. Uh... What, can I ask you a general question, uh, Kanish? What are you watching this on? Because you're 40 seconds ahead of me. As far as channel? or Yeah. Uh, I'm are on streaming it or you, I'm on cable. No, I'm on K- TNT. Uh, I think I'm on. Well, I know it's on TNT for Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know it's on TNT. Yeah, I'm on cable. It. I'm asking, are you streaming? Day, what, what are you using to watch it? Uh, just uh, just for a standard U verse cable. Got the got the fiber in this wow. house, though, baby. That's, that's, I mean, it's terrible. I mean, my Cox cable is that far behind you because I'm I'm not streaming it. I'm watching it on cable and I'm 40 seconds behind you. I mean, hey, that, listen, this is really important. important. When you're shit. If you're live wagering, unless you are a complete savvy pro, I don't think you should be betting except for during the TV timeouts because of what Brad's saying. You're you're so far behind it. Literally, I can tell by the way the odds are moving. I know what just happened the next two possessions. So if a total drops from 125 to 123, I'm like, yeah, they did. They both just missed. Um, and I'm 40 seconds behind. But you got to recognize you're so far behind, you have to go ahead and wait and just play during the timeouts and the variation is huge, you know, between books, maybe we can talk at the next TV timeout. We'll, we'll, we'll scope, which, which is coming up. We can scope out, you know, differences in what everybody's dealing uh, on this game. By the way, it's disappointed. I love circus sports. I'm sure you guys saw this, Brad circus dealing minus minus one fifteen pricing each direction on sides and totals during the NCAA tournament. And so in game, so, pardon in, in game, game? Though, right? Yes. In game. Okay. Uh, but I would say if, I mean, if you can't beat the betters during the tournament at minus 115 in each direction, I mean, my goodness, there just aren't that many games. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you that. Uh, wow. Well, as soon as we said, you know, slow moving <laughs> Houston quick, uh, what, like 10 points. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that's going to going to do it for the first half money line so i'm going to jump here at the under eight timeout boys all right hey sounds good we'll keep it going me uh did you got any uh people want picks i mean i know a majority of people probably looking for high level conversation i know another portion won't want picks do you have anything you're looking at honestly Saturday, i've Sunday. been mostly no joke mostly betting nit and cbi this week like stuff that i'm actually filling for people uh i am cit on Alabama A and M uh, plus nine or, or better, there's some nine and a half out there strangling still uh, against Norfolk State. So that's one for goes tomorrow. I don't know what time. I don't know the difference between the CIT and CB, CBI, but uh, Alabama A and M tomorrow. That's one that uh, I filled uh, for for one of my guys. So uh, four, they- yeah, four Eastern uh, four Eastern uh, start time. Uh, if you're old school game, number eight, eight, one Alabama, a and M plus nine, uh, Joey, those- don't go. You got, I, I, you need to translate this for me. So when Joey Kanish fills an order, what exactly does that mean? That means somebody that's smarter than me at college basketball sends it to me. And I, uh, I get down for them uh, a portion of, 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 
for that wager. So how are you compensate? Do you just like bet two grand and, and take a half of it and give the other half to them? Or do you get a share of their winnings? What's, what's the arrangement? Uh, yeah, it depends. Obviously kind of case by case, but that would, that would be the kind of a normal setup would be uh, half of whatever I can fill. Yeah. And I, I, I do the same thing. I, I oftentimes, and, and this is probably the best piece of advice I could give people. Brad's right. I'm scattered brain, but the scattered brain stuff's usually pretty good that, <laughs> I mean, I, and Brad and I have done this where I've said, Hey, this is a good number. You know, if you can get down, you know, whatever you can get down, if you want, if you can throw me a, a piece of it, you know, and, and, and now all of a sudden he may be unaware. I tell him to bet smash Nova women's tennis. That's not a real name, you know, and boom. And now, now he, he, if he can get a dime down, he takes a nickel, gives me a nickel. We're all happy. Absolutely. I, you know, if it's nothing that I, I have any clue about, I, I usually split, I give 70 to the originator. Uh, I, whatever, that, that's how I operate. So Se- 70, 30, 70 to the originator. If I mean, if it's like w- women's golf or something like that, that I have no clue about, then that, that's just, I mean, if, if there's that much of an edge, it, shouldn't he, you know, that person that originated get a majority, at least that's how I, I think of it. That's hey, just, you know, I'm a little frustrated. I'm paying like almost 500 a month for the Don best premium service. And, and I see Houston 16 and Longwood 12. So if I wasn't watching the game, I'd be losing my mind over it. Is it just me or have these guys really slipped in terms of their updates? Their scores are wrong all the time. The clock's wrong all the time. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I might have to go spank odds. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm so old. I don't, I don't, can you imagine the transition and, 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 and can I handle it? I use both. I'm probably still 70, 30 down best. Where are you at condition before you sign up? I sign off. I know you got a part of it. I, I agree with the product is continually slipping. It's just more, more familiarity for me. And that's not, uh, not an anti, I I mean, I was using both for a while when it was free. Um, but I, to me, there's not enough of a Delta yet to, to really if, for me to consider but at some point if it keeps going in these two directions i'll probably make the switch but for now i'm still a still a db user um but maybe i'm, I'm not locked into that forever by any means you gotta go bud i appreciate you jumping on again your best bet for tomorrow alabama a and m i love it plus nine you know it baby and uh hopefully our lancers uh get some juice here with seven minutes left all right. See you, buddy. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking to you in, in the next week or so. Uh, if we do another watch party or we do a regular episode of Hit the Books, man. Appreciate you uh, popping on. Hi, profile. Me, bud. Uh, I'm going to try to get you on, on the, online here. So let's uh, let me let me narrow you down because I'm going to be tough on you. Uh, can I ask you uh, upside? On because the, the whole reason we're doing this watch along, obviously, a lot of notoriety for the Purdue. Unfortunate for your bankroll last year, loss uh, on the money line. You almost lost another one as far as the, the Villanova and the Big East tournament. I get why you bet them personally. I I get that wholeheartedly. I I, I mean, I honestly, you know, I, I see that. I just want to understand why to the masses, and I'm talking to to the Twitter followers. What is the upside in giving out minus 4,000, minus 4,500, minus 2,500 money lines? Well, I think that for content, or what is it? Let let me get inside that big brain of yours. Well, the brain might not have been so big and it was a bad pick, but the bottom line is once I gave out Purdue, I somewhat was pot committed because I was the biggest dummy in the world. And so at that point, I'm like, well, let me, ideally, let me give out 40 straight winners, you know, the other way. And so I mean, and, and fair enough. The, the the bottom line is, I mean, no one is going to debate that it's a good bet. No, I mean, you could take a hundred mathematicians, stat geeks, cri- Kelly criterion geeks. The only question is how much should you bet? You know, I saw Rufus Peabody came in and slammed a few of them himself. And Rufus is not a dumb guy. Elhu and the like. And, and, but what happens is that the, the, the danger of course, is that someone's listening and then they put their whole bankroll on one play and any one play can lose. So I've lesson learned. I've been very good about disclosing never in general look to ever bet more than 5% of your bankroll on any one play. And if, so, so what if it, if it pays nothing, it's still a good bet, put it in, you know, if, if, if you've got 20,000 in bankroll, that means you risk a thousand and you're going to make five, you know, some minimal amount. So you're going to make $20 um, and you shouldn't bet more. 
I just don't, I don't see how the regular Joe, uh, how that adds up for him, how that helps him. I, I just, I, I see why it helps you. You have the bankroll and you, you know, the unforeseen happens and you, you do lose that rare one. Uh, I, you can, you know, not blank too much. I mean, obviously you're going to be hurting a little bit, but uh, it's not going to set you back that much. The little guy that's betting and used to betting $20 a game. Uh, and, and that's still, you know, a majority of the people are still betting that, believe it or not, 20 to $50 you know, a game. I, I just don't see the upside in recommending him betting 20 bucks to win a dollar. You know, where probably would could help the little guy is it make it alerts him that if he, I mean, the little guy's looking to bet the other way, he's looking to bet the toothpick to win the lumber yard. So I would make how, the case. How, he's not going to change though. Fez, do you not understand? People still play a lot of the scratch off and stuff like that. They want a bet a little to win a lot. You're never going to change that thought process. No matter. Oh, I, mean, I think I will. I, I think there are probably some people out there, maybe in the chat, if right. anyone's like, you know, you used to play, I mean, Joey isn't, he's still going to play Longwood in the first half. But the, uh, I mean, I mean, it, truly recognizing what a horrendous bet these big underdogs is are on the money line. And you hear this all the time. You hear this in the national media. You hear guys saying, I'm going to take every, emphasize every, every underdog, and I'm going to play them on the money line in the NCAA tournament. Where is the caveat where, oh, well, of course, I'm not going to play any favorite, any dog of more than 20 points because those bets you know, mathematically are so abysmal, not because the no VIG number necessarily would be abysmal, but because of the number that's offered. There's, there's people like listening to those guys and they're, 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 they're literally betting these 16 seeds at 20 to one. I mean, so if we can get those people to stop making those horrendous bets, that's good. All right. Fair enough. Uh, in that regard, uh, as we were got we're five minutes here, obviously Houston's well on their way. The, the, the hope was, ladies and gentlemen, for those that are just sticking around, uh, is that we'd have maybe a somewhat competitive game and, and say you're sweating. Let me grill you on this a little bit. Uh, I, I won't take you back to last year. I'll just take you back, you know, uh, 10, 10, 14 days ago. What was you what were you thinking inside that and be honest, uh, what, what were you thinking with, with the Villanova DePaul game? Uh, and what was what was the plan of action uh, there when DePaul was probably, I mean, I mean, it was even money, if not you know, slightly favored uh, DePaul coming down the stretch there. Uh, what, 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 what were you thinking and uh, how much did you play back? Yeah. So I, I watched the game. I, I I'm embarrassed to say I won more because I took points in DePaul along the way, but not very much. Um, DePaul played lousy. I, I watched the game. DePaul was awful. It's just Villanova was terrible. And obviously one of the guys got hurt. That didn't help. When one of the guys got hurt, I did play. I can't remember the points I took, but I never played the money line on DePaul. Um, and I, I was saying I'm the most unlucky guy of all time. You know, almost every really good better I know. Most unlucky you know, guy of all time? I mean, I know you're a really good contest player, but you don't think that was, you know, a little bit fortunate that you're the only two-time super contest winner? Yeah, I was I was very fortunate to win the South Point twice. I did win the super contest twice also. Um I ran better than God. So it reminds me of Chris Moneymaker. One time I, I yeah, you still I, consider yourself unlucky? Chris Moneymaker. Yes, I'll explain why. Um, right. Chris Moneymaker, no, and yes. Chris Moneymaker once said, God, I run so bad in tournaments once. And he's a pretty good poker player. So uh, the truth is he probably, you know, he gets spoiled where you, where, where you run so good. Hey, uh, look, you hear all the time, people will say, um, hey, I've, I've, I've gotten really unlucky on the really close games. I've lost way more than I've won. And then some square sh sharp say, no, it's, it, it all evens out. It's like 50, 50. Well, that's stupid because if you're picking 55%, then you're going to get, you're going to get rooked 11 times with bad beats for every nine times you get lucky wins, but it's way worse than that. And here's why most pros, not all, most play more dogs and they play more unders. Well, guess what? When the game goes to effing overtime, you're not going to, it's only going to help overs and it's only going to help favorite betters. And so because of that, if you play a whole lot of games that go to any game that you do take a snapshot of that goes into overtime, you're going to get screwed beyond belief if you're like 80% unders and 80% dogs. And that's why overtimes alone, I'm, I'm confident, have cost me maybe $5 million over my lifetime. That's probably a very, very conservative estimate. And I don't think I'm alone. Any high volume player that plays like I do, I think would, you know, have a similar type of result. I can speak to that to keep it recency bias. Uh, conference tournament week was a nightmare betting unders uh, blindly 
had 80, actually probably 90% unders and a uh, lot of overtimes killed me last week. Uh, probably should have ran, ran a little bit better than what I did. So I agree with that. Uh, I still think you're relatively fortunate. Uh, I know you're a great player, but uh, just think, uh, just think, uh, what you be? You went and uh, the, the one time it was heads up of what uh, against uh, Matty Holt down the stretch, wasn't it? Just uh, just that one win to become the only two time Super Contest winner. Think about the touting, the marketing of your career uh, being that the only two time. Wouldn't you consider that relatively fortunate? How how much did that that one game? that went your way, how much did that help? And not just the, the 300,000 or what you won in that particular contest, but the branding, I mean, that, that's made you millions. Has it not? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, millions. So you, I, I would say, <laughs> I, would say I don't know if it's made me millions. I mean, I, I, I've been in a, I've been in the bottom top five, a couple contests came up, you know, the, one of them was the Ohio state, uh, Washington game. Uh, it would, it would have been the difference. I, I wasn't talking hundreds of thousands uh, of dollars, but tens of thousands. And, you know, the Washington came back in the game. I sometimes I feel like I I don't run as well as you. Maybe it's because I'm not as smart as you, and I don't put myself in, in as good enough position. But uh, I'd sure like to run uh, run that way in a couple contests. Well, I oh. could I could I could argue it's interesting because it, there, there's two sides of the equation. So I would argue I ran I ran better than God in Survivor this year because I got eliminated at the end of September. And I cashed a 16%, you know, entry because I invested in Greg Jones. Okay. So, and I would argue like I completely choked in circa millions, whereas in second place at the end of November and I finished 21st. So, but didn't that, I mean, obviously we're playing different, you and I sell picks and we're marketing and stuff. And we're also social media has helped us as well compared to, you know, if you're talking back in the day, uh, it's just easier to, to sell to, to a bigger audience. Uh, don't you think you being in the top five also helped you? Uh, this year, and I'm not, you know, criticized. I'm saying, Hey, I mean, you're running, you were running really hot. It, it was good that you were in the mix for as long as you did. Don't you think that helped sales this year? Oh, no question. I mean, and obviously finishing 21st out of 5,300 is not going to be a negative, you know, in, in terms of the big picture of everything. Um, you know, it's interesting. This whole, the whole tout business, I'm anti-tout and I'm, and I sell picks and I, I would make the case that, you know, in an article I did, um, Todd Dewey wrote this article and there's a misconception out there. There's a misconception. There's people like, like, like there's certain guys that just hate, like Spanky hates touts. Alan Boston hates touts. Um, and they make it the, the group out to be like the biggest scumbags out, out in the world. And the truth is my experience has been 90% of the people who sell picks that I know in Vegas are hardworking, diligent people that work way more way more than 45 hours a week trying their best to provide winners. Now they don't win, but they, but it, it's not like there's, they're scamming. I mean, they're really, really trying hard. And Brad, you know, some of the people I'm talking about here. It's some, just, I won 90, 10. Give me the under max bet under. I think most, I generally have a very negative conception of most people, especially uh, anybody to do a social media, anybody in the gambling industry, whether they sell picks or not. I'll go under 90 as far as good people. All right. Fair enough. Um, you know, one of the things that stands out too is that, you know, Brad and I used to talk about, there'd be people like it's, it's in the middle of football season and yeah, just out of nowhere, like let's have a trip to Hawaii. Let's go to Waikiki or the rest of the Island, or let's have this big fun weekend getaway. And it's like, fuck that. You know, it's like, that's not, that's not possible for someone who's, who's a real expert. You're, you're burning the midnight oil. You can't just take three days off and just like have fun. I mean, but like maybe correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, you're like, maybe I'll catch a movie at 2 a.m. on a, on a Tuesday night. That's my recreation for the week. Would you agree? No, uh, no, no movie for me. I just, I'd prefer just to sleep if I could, uh, I'm not going to make this turn into, you know, turn into a, you know, I, I'm the exception to the rule type of thing. I, you know, if I, again, if I, I'll say what I said, if I was so good, I, I wouldn't be doing media. I wouldn't be doing content. I wouldn't be selling picks. If I, if I was the smartest guy in the, in the room, so to speak, you wouldn't even know who the hell I was. So uh, I'll just leave it at that. But I, I, my favorite bet of this whole stream so far would be, you said, I, I want to get this quote and we can uh, put this up. You said 90, 10. Outs are good. The people no, that you I, know. It depends. It's up to your definition of what is good. 
What? Uh, let, let me let me let me yeah, say. I'm in Vegas, said try hard. All this stuff of, I mean, of the people I, that I've interacted with. I go ninety ten the other way. They're bad. of the people I've interacted with, and I don't want to mention names or people. Like I would say the vast and probably there's you're right. There's probably a survivorship bias that the people that I don't like I don't interact with. Yeah. So the people I'm interacting with are the good guys. You know, the hard are the hardworking guys. And I will say this: people, you guys have no idea how hard Brad works. I would say when my, when we worked together, I Brad should have worked there. harder this past year. I fucking sucked. Well, you worked, you worked, you worked like we were. Brad and I worked together for what three years? Was it three? Uh four football seasons. Four, okay, four. I uh, count football seasons as years. I would say Brad worked over a hundred hours a week, conservatively. I I I don't see how it could be any less. Like literally, he would be up all night, catch two hours of sleep, and then come in and work the next day and would, would do that for two straight days to get your newsletter out and everything else. If there was one person that I would follow in college football, it would be Brad to get his newsletter and, and all that he does. And, you know, I, frankly, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm losing it. Like this tailgate tent guy is really good. I hadn't even heard of him until this year. So it shows how like, I'm not connected enough because this guy's moving numbers like, like a crazed man. Um, so I'm sure he's working. A ton. I don't know how well you know tailgate tent, but you know there's there's another guy that's um, I'm sure working like like tons of hours, right? Absolutely, uh, specialization. Uh, I, ne- I mean, it's not about how many hours, honestly. I mean, obviously, you would think that th- there, there's certainly a point where you know 100 hours a week is, is probably negative ROI because you're not getting enough sleep and whatnot. And well, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but uh, that, that I was. That wasn't a positive experience for me. Uh, the, the, those last couple of years, I, I no longer am putting in a hundred hour weeks. So I'll just say I'll be frank in that regard. I don't. I don't think it's necessarily good to do that. So uh, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, I know we're getting the last two minutes here, and people. I know we're going off on tangents, so like we're talking uh, uh, on the phone or whatnot. But uh, anything you're looking at tomorrow, because I know people want picks, they want information. I said before you came on. What was enticing to me from a Fezzik perspective was DraftKings was hanging minus 900 on Connecticut money line. Uh, I think they destroy your Northwestern Wildcats. What did you? What do you think of that match? Yeah, to answer your question, I tell you what I played. Um, of course, the numbers are going to be gone, but not not completely. So I I I bet and I gave out Illinois minus nine and a half. Basic strategy: when a Cinderella has a big upset and then they're playing a legit team, they typically in the NCAA tournament. Once you get to the second round, you want to fade Cinderella. So I went ahead and backed Arizona. I laid nine. So another $50 fine because nines don't exist. I think it's fine to lay nine and a half. Uh, and yes, I laid 13 um, on Connecticut. And that's the advantage of betting the overnights. Um, those were the three plays that I made before. I, you know, uh, you know, Joey, Joey likes Alabama a and I think, again, that's worth the look. Let's make money tonight. Uh, we have a chair thrower situation on James Madison, Wisconsin, you know, Wisconsin, Brad, um, the, uh, I have to feel you're playing over or nothing and you might want to over second half, right? Yeah. You might want to consider a whiskey to over parlay because the one weird thing about this, like if this was North Carolina or a a team with athletes, I'd say, Oh, they're going to press them like crazy. They're going to pick up the pace. They'll be able to dictate the pace. And I'd be super confident. Now, my problem is that when you get a team like Virginia or Wisconsin, Virginia would be the extreme example. When Wisconsin, when, when Virginia gets down 20, they're dead. They're donezo because they only play slow. What do you think about Wisconsin being able to push the pace against James Madison? Uh, this is their bet. I mean, from a school perspective, uh, and again, I, I don't originate college basketball. I mean, I, I didn't even tout college hoops. So I, I want to put that out there. So, I mean, you take this for what it's worth. From what I've, you know, watched, uh, and, and read the last two weeks. Uh, that's the only t- time period where I've been heavily involved betting college hoops. Uh, it's their best offense in 30 years. Uh, so I, I, it's not your typical like Bo Ryan grind it out. I know it looks like that tonight, but uh, I think first our second half over uh, is what I'll be playing as soon as the stream's over. I, I I'll endorse that. Hey, I want to ask you the, obviously the overs are rocking and rolling. It's, it might be close to 50% today, but that's only because a couple games just barely got under and a whole bunch of games like Alabama are going over by a zillion first half unders 
were historically tremendous in the NCAA tournament. If you're betting those, you're bankrupt right now. Um, your thoughts of why things are so different in this year's tournament than prior tournaments? Don't don't know enough to even to guess. Uh, I just got to be on it. I, I haven't followed enough. I know you were surprised by that, but I, I really stepped away uh, after last season. I, 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 I no longer even tout college hoops, so I, I don't know why that would be the case this year. I know so just there, to there was people telling me about the, 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 year, a different the way the year went. They, they, Go ahead. They, they changed the refereeing, obviously, so that they were um, more of an emphasis on calling fouls. And because that scoring went up in college basketball, so overs rocked and rolled early in the year. And then that got scaled back a little bit as the year went on. But it sure looks like – and then there was talk also – do you know anything about this, Brad? I mean, you're a free-throw champion. And they say <laughs> that the diameter nice of the ball – can vary by up to like like a, a, a half of an inch between 17 and 16 and a half inches or something. And, and they said they use a different ball during the tournament. Do you know any? Have you heard anything about this? I've heard about the different ball thing. Uh, and people were thinking that it would help unders. Uh, I didn't dive into it. Again, I, speaking blindly, I, I did not. I really took a step back from college hoops this year. I, I, I apologize to those listening. I don't have, I normally would be the guy all the, you know, the, all the college knowledge, but I, I don't have that this year. Well, uh, I know you yeah, have I, I do know a different, a different type of ball, different texture. Uh, and they, they've been doing this for a couple of years now, a, a different ball for the tournament. Now I, I know you do have all the knowledge when it comes to college football. I have to just ask you because I saw it, Michigan, if you would have asked me how many games is Michigan going to win this year? I would say lucky to win eight. And then I saw one place that opened them at nine and a half. That number seems to be very wrong. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, for people that, that, that notoriously watch the show here, I, I have a head-to-head -head with Kanish. He took over. I took under. I'm very uh, negative on Michigan this year for a variety of reasons. I mean, just your basic. I mean, when you're evaluating a team in the offseason, number one, I mean, a lot of roster turnover, only one starter back on offense. I do think that defense is going to be legitimate. Uh, I mean, obviously, the, you know, the, the reason – one of the reasons why they hired Sharon Moore – uh, was for staff continuity, and it just hasn't been the case. I mean, mo almost the entire staff ended up leaving uh, and going with Harbaugh to, to the NFL. Uh, so you got a first-time coach with a first-time staff, uh, not wild about all the hires that he's made. I, and he's made some splashy name hires, but uh, I'm not wild about all those. Uh, and then I think, you know, most pertinent to Michigan is they've been relatively fortunate as far as their schedule uh, the last couple of years. Not the case this year. You, you play Texas, you play USC, you play Oregon, you play at in Columbus. Uh, even I think a trip to at Washington, the team they just beat for the national championship, even though Washington has a lot of the same questions Michigan has, I think that's even a tricky game. So you went from having maybe two or three games at most that, that, that are you know in question for the season, like they've had the last couple of years. Now they got half their schedule is kind of now in, in question. So I'm not, you know, not, not as many slam dunk wins. Uh, so, yeah, under nine and a half is what I bet. Under nine and a half is widely still available at four or five different books right now. And I think that's a that's a, as pot of, positive EV type of bet as you can make from this stream, at least coming from uh, the words coming out of my mouth. So uh, I'm with you on that one. Hey, let me ask you about the West Coast teams going to the Big Ten. Hard enough to be doing all that travel, but doing it for the first time, not being used to go to go to Columbus or God forsaken Rutgers or wherever you're, you're traveling to Happy Valley. I would think across the board, if if blanket, I would play Washington, Oregon, UCLA, USC under thoughts. Uh, UCLA under when the Chip Kelly news, this is another thing that, you know, I, I mentioned this on the thing. It's easy to win because people, there's more offerings and more ways to get down. I don't have to get in my car and drive to a casino. I can bet it from my app. News is breaking uh, and I'm getting that news immediately from, from social media or whatnot. And I can bet on my phone that in that regard, it's easier for me personally to win. So when the Chip Kelly news is uh, breaking, uh, even though it's you know Feb early February, I got sports books with, with win totals up on UCLA. Never been the case ever before. A win total is up on a college football team in February. Of course, I've been under, but it's moved to win. So uh, I would still lean under, even though it's moved from six and a half to five and a half. I not a big fan of the Sean Fo uh, you know Foster hire. Not a big fan of the staff. Uh, late in the process, recruiting hasn't been great. Uh, yeah, UCLA under still for me. Not obviously moving a win, which is significant, more than 100 cents. 
uh, maybe you know closer to 150 cents uh, as far as you, you know, if you're pricing it. Uh, but still lean under there. Man, Oregon's very talented. I mean, from a power ratings aspect, they're their top four in the country. Uh, I'm kind of neutral on their win total at 10 and a half. USC, my number's like under seven and a half. I don't, I think that's going to be, I'm going to wait for the market to mature more on that one and see if I can get something rogue there that I can bet under. But I'm leaning that way, even though I think the defense has improved. Uh, and then Washington, yeah, under, just uh, look, I know people are, I get emails every day. I get questions every day. And I know stuff's been up for a while. Let's get through spring. I like watching games. I want the market to get more widely available, something else that I've discussed on this particular stream. Uh, and then I also, we have a whole another transfer portal to get through. So uh, I'm leaning towards blindly betting unders on three of the four. Uh, not that I should say blindly, but uh, I, I just need a little bit more info fest there. Uh, I, I, it's early. This market right now is usually what the market looks like in early May, mid-May. I mean, it's six to eight weeks ahead of what it typically is. So, uh, and I don't think it should be. To, I'm glad I'll take advantage of it in some instances, but I uh, I would prefer to wait until May to to to, to start unloading my bankroll. Hey, uh, I know we're jumping all over the the boat, but second yeah. half I did play two bets. I played Wisconsin James Madison over seventy five. Don't play the parlay. You might be tempted to correlate parlay whiskey to the over. The problem is whiskey's down 13. So if they cover the second half, then it could become a very close game, which would compromise your over. You actually don't want Wisconsin to catch up. So over 75, I played and I I did play Longwood plus nine reduced. Uh, I think I agree with that. What's your thoughts on this uh, of the game that we're discussing here? Thoughts on the second half total. Um, I'm neutral. I'm neutral. I don't. I don't really have a feel for it. Although, when any team that scores 16, I, no team wants to score 35 in the NCAA tournament. So, I think Longwood probably. I mean, Houston's D is awesome, obviously, um, but Houston probably let up. And like we saw that in Connecticut, Stetson, right, where um, yeah. Stetson famously wins the race to 10 second half, um, goes on a run. It wouldn't surprise me if Longwood even won the second half. And so, if that wouldn't surprise me. Catch a nine. Oh, look at that. The money money against me at Bet Online, which is a reduced big plus place. You can play plus nine, play 102, which I will do. Um, we'll thoughts on this? Because typically, and you correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, again, I don't bet college hoops as much as I do college football. Big blowouts in college hoops. Typically, you're going to say under during the regular season, correct? Uh, no. Um, okay. Asterisk. So why is it over? Because I, I was going to lean more towards over in, in postseason because, you know, okay, you take the starters out, but I think it's a little fun and gun more in, in the postseason. So Pastrami, my buddy, will probably get mad at me. Um, but when a team's up, let me just say this. When a team is up 17 with seven with, with four minutes to play, they're going to milk the possession and run clock. Uh, see okay. – Nevada Reno donking off their game against Dayton, which goes way under. But when a team's down 26, um, it's happy action fun time still because there's no danger of the team losing such that they don't have to slow it down. So if you're trying to play huge blowouts under when a team's up close to 30, I don't believe you're going to be successful doing that. Fair enough. A couple things in the chat. I don't want to totally get off the chat. Any uh, the San Diego State minus five and a half uh, uh, on Sunday from Harry in the chat. I I'm kind of opposite that. I, I lean more towards Yale. Where, where are you? At? I know you don't originate hoops, but I uh, I know you pay much closer attention this time of year. Any thoughts oh, I, with that a bet you made so far? I bet Yale. I can tell you that I bet Yale so uh, already in that game. I'm shocked. Uh, I think spot's great for San Diego State. Yale gets their biggest win in forever. Remember Brown, the biggest scumbags east of the Mississippi. Brown. Uh, it's a quote from the Gambler, the original Gambler, James Kahn, 1973. So Brown uh, um, <laughs> grads, don't blame me. I'm just quoting James Kahn, the great James Kahn. Um, the, the fact that Yale could lose to Brown and they should have lost to Brown means they just can't be that good. Um, and they got a huge win. I think they get smashed by a San by Diego San State. State. What's that? By San, you think they get smashed? San Diego State, a Mountain West team smashes them. I, how much I you want to go? We'll go market five and a half. You want to go nickel? Yeah, we'll go. You and I go head to head for a nickel. So, and dinner. I want some pizza. Yeah, 
All right. Well, I'll pay you at dinner or not. Yeah. Nickel plus dinner. Uh, all right. Fair enough on that one. So I like that, that we got some action there for those. But again, I'm just following, I'm following basic strategy that, that like I, I it, my basic strategy is fade Cinderella off of a enormous win. So, uh, so NC state over Oakland tomorrow. I, I, uh, I mean, we can make this two for two. I'm on Oakland. NC state's an 11. C. I don't know if NC state's better than Oakland is <laughs> the problem. So I can't, I can't back an NC state right. team that, 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 that basically is their own Cinderella. You know, what, what is interesting is how NC state, you know, had that run back in the eighties with Valvano and they were, they came up totally flat against um, Pepperdine. Should have lost to Pepperdine. And here they didn't come up flat. They played a great game. So maybe NC State, something fundamentally changed. And that's where I lack the competence to be able to tell you whether why NC State sucked all year and now they're suddenly good. Chat's asking some questions. Uh, we can go into our five minutes here. We'll, we'll go to the, to the top of the hour here. Uh, Michigan State, North Carolina, I lean towards Michigan State. Did you do anything in that game? I did nothing. Um, you know, I, I think it's pretty compelling um, how Izzo two and zero in the Big Ten tournament and now one and zero in the Big Dance. So a tough guy to bet against. Um, uh, looking to see if there's anything else. Uh, I will throw. Jared was pretty active in in the in the chat. Uh, so th- thank you, Jared, for being active in the chat tonight. Uh, a lot of comments from him. Uh, Xander, uh, in the chat, do you like Iowa State? I don't. I don't like slow tempo teams that don't have great offense laying points. And I think Washington State and particularly the Pac-12 might be a little undervalued. Uh, I, I bet Washington State. Nothing big. When I say I bet something, uh, nothing big uh, in college hoops. I just I, I don't originate it, so I, I don't have that same trust factor uh, in my bets like I do college football. Did, did you bet that one? I did not, but I will say – and this is like a nuance. Whenever I see a game line like between six and a half and seven, and obviously seven's a really important number, uh, I'm more likely to spend more time analyzing it than when it's the same number everywhere. So we talk about the NC State game. Well, that's probably a bad example because there's sixes and six and a halves. Whenever a game's lined at 6.75, now I'm much more interested in betting on uh, on the game because I can lay six and a half or take seven. By contrast, if you look at Gonzaga, Kansas right now, it's like four and a half everywhere. So I'm, now I got to be, I got to be stone cold, right? I can't get any help at all on the line on either side. Um, the same is true. Like in the NIT, I see Ohio state va tech and I'm staring at fours everywhere. I love it when there's a disparity between or of in opinions, which there is in the Washington state, Iowa state game. That's an advantage to the better. And obviously let's let the, Let's let the market mature a little bit. Obviously, people and we got a lot of people in town, uh, you know, the, the, in Vegas flying, and then obviously a lot of people. Joe Q Public's not going to bet until tomorrow on these games. So let's at your square books, you might get some of your disparities tomorrow on some of these matchups that you're looking for. Uh, any other closing thoughts? I know this is total scatterbrain. I know I'll probably get a message from Moretto and the Pizza Man, uh, you know, that saying you should have kept him more on track. Uh, for the audience as far as the game. We didn't have a very competitive first half from the get-go, so I just let you do your thing in that regard. Uh, a- any big-picture thoughts as far as what you've seen so far in the tournament and how you're going to operate moving forward? And any other things you want to get off your chest? Because uh, uh, you and I haven't talked like this, at least in public. Uh, you and I want face-to-face, one-on-one. Well, not face-to-face. You couldn't get your freaking camera working. Uh, you and I haven't done this in quite some time. It's been four years. It seems like there's a lot of more of the same on overs. So like TCU, Utah State, uh, I, I think it's 157 and a half right now. All these games that start out fast, it seems like they just keep going. I mean, there's a couple exceptions, but in prior tournaments, you know, you get that second TV timeout, maybe you get some scoring and it always seems to slow down. And I'm not saying there weren't some games that that happened on. Uh, today there was one in particular, well, like Duke Vermont started fast and completely slowed down, but my goodness, it seems like more often than not, you just keep getting Nebraska, Florida games, you know, run, run, run. Um, so I would say any, any game that starts out fast, fast paced, lots of scoring, don't step in front of it and say, oh, I can get 10 points better than the opening total. I'm going to go under. That seems to be a disastrous strategy. Um, with, you know, with the tournament. I, I also, I can't emphasize enough. Brad mentions specialization. Let me leave you with how to win. 
if you only follow, follow one conference in college, in football or in basketball, and you're betting that conference and you're betting live and you're just living, breathing, eating on that conference and you're losing, I don't believe you. I just don't, I don't believe it's possible because you're going to be so much far ahead of the bookmaker, especially if you're betting openers and you're betting live and you're just going to know so much more about what's going on that you just, you, you have an advantage that's just too great for the odds makers to be able to overcome. I thought you were going to, I'm kind of disappointed in that answer. I thought you were saying that the, the way to win is to buy my picks at pregame.com. I thought you were going to say that. I, I, if, if, if you asked me, I, I, I do think that the top down versus the bottom up approach is better. If you can find ways to bet where you don't have to think, all right? I'll use an example. At the first two games in an NBA playoff game, go over. Brad, who do I, what, what do I like on the total in game three? First, you're talking a series. First two games went over. Yes. Are you talking about, when are you betting? You, you betting five minutes before tip or are you betting uh, when the line opens up? I'm betting when the line opens up. Well, no, actually, that in this case, I can pretty much bet it at, at any time. Are you really looking for CLV? You're going to bet over, right? Uh, no, I'm betting under, and I it's just I it's see. Just that, that, I clarified that. For... I mean, what, what, you want to get the best number. I mean, if you're betting at open, you're well, why would you bet under at open on, on that example? Because you've got a, a and then a you complicated are... situation where the public is going to pound over, and the pros know that the under. Well, that's what I'm saying. Valid. Five minutes before tip, I would have answered under, uh, and then I also got to you know I'm man, this is you. You know, how much did – what was the disparity in the first two games? Did they both go over by 20 points a game? Did one go over by one point and the other one went over by three? I mean, there's – you know this. This is the same well, black and white. This is a lot of gray. There, there's a lot of questions that well, I Well, there's a lot of complexity how to get the very best number, but the directionally getting at unders in that circumstance where I'm going with the with the top down – and, and just being an expert at a sport, I can tell you, you're going to have a lot of difficulty losing in the NBA playoffs, whether you bet under at open or at close or at any way, shape or form, because historically that's just been very strong. Now, having said that, historically, the tournament playing first half unders has been very, very successful. And you're you're losing badly if you're trying to 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 win that way. I'll close with this. I think things are changing. Uh, you know, obviously my sports that, that I specialize in is changing. I personally don't put, I mean, I, you know, I'm an ego guy, but I don't have that much ego. Uh, just because I was winning in the past, the sports changed so much. Doesn't mean that I, I'm necessarily, you know, going to use that data and that, pro, that past experience and automatically think and perceive that, Oh, of course I'm going to win at this certain rate in the future, because that's what I've done the last five years. I just think the entire market's changing. Sports, different sports are changing. Uh, so uh, that's my thoughts on that. Did you have any closing thoughts? I, I think it's in that regard, it's a little, th th there's some uneasiness is, when it comes to, to betting. It's gotten much, much, much harder to win. But one thing stays the same. Getting good numbers is critical to the process. And what's interesting, we poo-pooed this Houston Longwood. We're like, ah, just a blowout, nothing to see here. Well, the, the, the first half landed 59. If you liked under, you won. If you liked over, you won because there were, you know, you could have gotten a 58 and a half on the over and you, you, you could have gotten a 60 on the under. So it fiddles in the middle and that there's a whole lot of people out there that win in their own betting. They're professional betters. And I, I'll throw myself in this um, arena in many ways. You asked me who I like on a Sunday in the NFL. I don't know. We're usually nothing because I've laid two and a half on a game and it's currently lined at three or I've taken seven and it's lined at six. So that changes everything. Getting the best of the number is still in my eyes, the most important aspect of winning other than just pounding books that put up bad openers, which I know you do um, with um, emphasis every college football season. Now, what you just said kind of conflicts what I said earlier in the show, and I, I want to see if you agree with this. I said earlier in the show, I think it's easier to win. It's harder to win big. Do you agree with that? I think it's easier to win just because availability. Uh, like I mentioned UCLA. Oh, Chip Kelly's gone. I mean, the win total's already up. I can. I mean, not that it's a 90% sure thing bet, but I, I'm pretty confident it's a 70% type of bet. Uh, that, I think, is easier to win in today's day and age. Tougher to win in mature markets, tougher to win on game day 
Totally agree with that statement. Yeah, I, I love cool. that. I, I agree 100% because there's been a rush to market. Everyone wants to get to market first. They want to be yeah. the first to put the numbers up, but the limits have gotten slashed to the point yeah. where, hey, you, you know, you're lucky to get a dime down on things. But guess what? If that's what you're, if you normally bet a dime or less, why wait? Play, you know, play the stuff that's completely off and take advantage of it, but it doesn't scale. You can't bet 10,000 on it. So it's really hard to win big because of that. That'll do it. That is the man himself. Do you want any plugs in uh, before you, you sign off, Fez? I appreciate just, uh, you jumping don't go on to, here. Don't, don't go to myname.com. That's not me. That's someone who's just scamming you. So um, I only sell at one place. If you buy picks, you would, it would be at pregame.com. And don't buy me unless you're betting over $100 a game because um, you should just be looking for free content at that point. You shouldn't be buying, buying anybody's picks. Good discussion, buddy. You and I haven't talked for at this uh, length of time in a while. We got to do it more often, but I hope hey, you don't Wishnev catch any. Says he can, he can I hope you don't catch you. any flack from you know who from this. Hey, Wishnev says he can outshoot you um, in a game of horse. What do you respond to that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't been playing as much. And you know, when I made that comment four or five years ago, is when I was playing ba shooting baskets every single day, and uh, not just for you know months, or years at a time. I was shooting. Uh, I'm not not. Not, not the same man I once was. Uh, but, but in Toby Keith fashion, if somebody wants to bet and put some money on the line, I'm sure I'm as good once as I ever was. I, I don't think I can bench 200 anymore. So, hey. Yeah, that, another memorable play where you got the best of me. to say Too, ma too, many, too many birthdays. Uh, best of luck to you, my man. And um, let's uh, – what's, what's our $500 bet on? I have a memory of a goldfish. We got we – got, uh, one of them. Uh, it's uh, Yale against San Diego State. Where we're, you got you're t laying the five and a half on the Aztecs. I'm taking the five and a half. Guys, that's Fezzik. Uh, I am Brad. Jason, I appreciate you jumping on and, and producing and trying to get uh, Fez's cameras working. Obviously, Kanish joined us earlier in the show. And a big thanks to anybody, especially on the East Coast, watching this throughout. I know it's past 11. Appreciate you guys joining in. Uh, and for those of you watching it on delay, just for the discussion, I'll be tweeting this out later. And again, for all the the updates as far as hit the books, follow us on Twitter at hit the books HQ and at the Hammer HQ. That'll do it for Steve Fezzik. I'm Brad Powers. You just watched Hit the Books.